from my heart and from my hand Why don't people understand my intention? Hey, FOT Nation, it's Tim Sackett, and I'm back again with a Weird Science video cast, sponsored by FOT and the great folks over at Higher View. Thank you to them for that, as always. I'm pleased to uh, welcome this week um, the CEO from the Marcus Buckingham Company. Not Marcus, because he's, he's not the CEO. He's just the guy they named the company after, but Jason Averbrook. Jason, how are you doing? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for having Thanks for coming on. So, um, so new, new into the role. You've been in with them for about almost a year now, right? Nine months. Yeah, it doesn't feel new. Uh, every month uh, at a startup CEO is uh, ten years. So uh, yeah, similar to the dog analogy, it's uh, it's not new anymore. Yeah. So the so I think a lot of our people that are watching, right? They know Marcus. They know all the great work he's done over the years. And so now you're running kind of his name company. So does he come in and like yell at you a lot? <laughs> no, what's really interesting is that, uh, you know, Marcus and I, when we decided to, uh, you know, to bond here to, to yeah. create what we're creating, you know, Marcus has an amazing background in data science, an amazing background in research and in developing assessments. And everyone knows the Q12 and Strength Finder. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, and what he was looking for was someone who had the HR technology background and chops to say, how do I take everything that I've built over the last 20 years and now put it into a technology that can be pushed out not to HR people, but to the masses? So yeah. team leaders, team members, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, no, I mean, when we, when we joined forces, it was very much a, uh, you know, hey, you do this, you do this, but together one plus one equals 10. And, uh, you know, for the first nine months, it's totally been that. So, uh, you know, really cool to work with him and, uh, you know, our, our partner, SurveyMonkey, um, you know, the two together from a board standpoint make a really great dynamic. Cool. And I, for those who don't know, I mean, a lot of most of your background, majority of your background, obviously, uh, Oracle, Ceridian, uh, PeopleSoft type, I mean, big, I mean, the, the, you know, the biggest HR tech companies that are out there. Um, and you worked in executive roles for both those companies before, I think, running your own HR tech, uh, not really analyst firm, but more of a consulting firm, right? Yeah, I mean, we went, I, I, good or bad, like I went from the d mainframe and DOS to Windows to <laughs> client server to, you know, client server and a web browser, which was not the internet, and then, you know, the internet type applications. So, yeah, I mean, I spent 15, 18 years doing, you know, 15 years in the vendor space, then started a company, you know, it, you know, it's great from a consulting standpoint when you work with companies that are quote unquote confused because... Yeah. Everyone's like, where do I go? What do I do? This cloud, you know, magical cloud. And yep. we've got these devices and what's, <laughs> are these really going to stick? And, you know, is the internet going to stay around and yeah. stuff? So, you know, spent a great eight years with uh, my co-founder, Heidi Spirge, doing that. Um, you know, and then uh, we were lucky enough to have a great partner, Apirio, uh, purchase our organization, which has really grown out everything that we built. And, um, you know, you know, nine months ago I had this opportunity and I was like, wow, I was going to take a little time off and, uh, Spend it with the kids, but uh, we're no. having way too much fun yeah. here. So, uh, you know, you can so sleep cool. when you die. Yeah, right. That's why I feel the same way. So, hey, so in Vegas for Sherm National this year, Marcus was one of the keynotes, and he made a comment that I think some people maybe didn't even pay attention. But I mean, for me, it was like the the biggest takeaway I took from the entire conference, which was the research that you guys are doing, and you know that you come out with is saying, hey, by the way, these millennials. You know, the ones that we've told you for the last decade want all this feedback. They don't want really, they don't want more feedback. They just want you to pay attention. Tell me, like, what, what impact does that have on performance management in all organizations across right now? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the, the definition of both of those are very vague. Yeah. So when you say feedback is bad, attention is good, that, that's way too black and white. Like we don't live in a world like that today. Feedback that has construction in it, that has constructive actions tied to it, that actually feels like you're a partner, you know, that, that's not bad feedback. Yeah. You know, that, 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 I mean, that's more like attention and it's more like coaching. Uh, feedback that just says, hey, you know, bad job this week. Or on your performance review, you could get better at this, this, and this. That's the type of feedback that's not constructive. So when we think about feedback, there's two different types of feedback. Mm -hmm. But when we think about attention, what we're trying to do is this whole concept of the attention economy is, you know, no one's giving you crit crit critique on your Facebook posts. Yeah. 
You know, like, you know, you so didn't, we you, all you want the we all want the don't like button. They won't put it on there. Right? Yeah, but you spelled that wrong, <laughs> or you didn't use a complete sentence, or what a stupid thing to do on a Sunday, or yeah. you know, your kids got crooked teeth. It's like we're not giving that feedback in Facebook. You know, the re what we want in Facebook is we want attention. What we want on Instagram is attention. The reason we do things like this is like, hey, it would be nice to be able to say great show, or you know, no yeah. one's gonna say bad. I mean. I'm sure people do, but no one's, you know, they're not going to say it out there. You don't know our sport. audience. Yeah. So what drives us a lot of times is, in today's world is attention. And, you know, I, I always call it the give to get. So you're giving, you're giving and you're putting something out there, but you want to get something back, which in this case, in that case is a like, you know, in this case, I'm putting out, you know, what am I, what am I working on? What am I thinking about? You know, what am I trying to do? And you want back, yeah, right on or, you know, a little adjusting and things like that. So. What we're trying to do is get rid of just the once a year feedback that isn't constructive yep. and really reframe it into how do I give feedback that feels more like attention, that's more tied to the specific actions that drive you. Uh, and that, you know, we're, we're, we label that as attention, but it's yeah. much more than just, oh, I really like your haircut, Tim. Yeah, no, definitely. And I love the analogy on the coaching side because I think so many of us have tried to say, oh, yeah. I'm a manager like a coach and I want to give feedback like a coach. And they think of these crazy coaches like the old Bob Knight, right? They're screaming at their people and, and, you know, and they show us these videos of these, you know, coaches that are yelling at kids during practice or whatever. And the reality is, is the coaches I've had and the coaching philosophy, I think that, you know, you would espouse to as well is this, this kind of um, coaching mythology where the, the player truly believes that the coach wants the best for them and wants to teach them, you know, here's how I can help you be the best player, the best performer, the best whatever. Right. And if, if we had that environment in our own work environments where I felt like my boss truly wanted the best for me in my career, wow, what a difference that would make. To yeah. me, that's the attention side versus that feedback side, which is, you know, the our typical kind of, hey, we're going to go out and teach our managers how to give constructive, critical feedback. And you're like, oh, that feels like discipline a little bit. Yeah. No, exactly. And, and, and what we do at TMBC is with the with a standout experience, it's a combination of coaching with a core that sustains it. So unfortunately, your coach can't be with you 24 seven from a work standpoint. You know, there has to be a way to sustain that, because if all you do is coach and all your coaching is spot on, spot on, spot on, spot on. But then at the end of the day, you have a once a year engagement survey, you know, you end up reverting back to the form. Whatever the form is, or have a once a year performance review. And by the way, there is in most organizations, only 10% of the leaders are probably great like that. Most of them are new. They're new leaders in new roles for the first time who are like, don't know what to do. So you can't just put the technology without the coaching around it. And it's not executive coaching. That's, I mean, coaching is coaching on demand, coaching is real time. It's not, oh, I gotta go to this executive coach like a marriage counselor again, yep. you know, and do that kind of stuff. It's, you know, how do I, coach in the action. And I think for me, you know, what we're trying to do is shift from measure of now, which is let's show you a measure, you know, and most people look at it and say, okay, now what do I do? You know, <laughs> to show me something and then give me something to take action on. Yeah. So I'm moving from measure of now to action of now. That's sort of where we're trying to get to and make sure that when people see a dip in engagement or see a performance issue, that there's coaching right there to help them understand how to deal with that. Yeah. And yeah. to me, that that's the new generation of, you know, engaged workers that then drive performance. Yeah, yeah. no, I totally agree with that. So yeah. I'm going to get you out with this last question. And really, based on your background, based on what you're doing um, at Marcus Buckingham Company, um, what, can it, what can the HR pros do right now from a performance management standpoint to kind of help those hiring managers, to help those new managers? Because we have so many over the last eight years, so many people have been throwing the keys and said, hey, guess what? You're a manager today. What, what one piece of advice could you give them? Can I give more than one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the first one is don't put new technology on top of the old process. I know it's over sad <laughs> and everyone knows it, but it's No, happened. it's so right. You it's are so right because I can't tell you how you talk. Like, we, you get new technology and I, you know, again, I love HR tech and talent acquisition tech. And I'll get so many people that I'll go in and say, oh, you should use this. And they'll go, but I, we want to, we want to jigsaw puzzle our process into this piece of technology. You're like, no, stop that. Yeah. I mean, to, to reinvent this place and to revolutionize this, you actually have to blow up and, you know, blow up is not, is it sometimes negative, sometimes positive, but you know, we know that 90% of employees don't like performance reviews and managers call them useless. Like, yeah. don't try to put a new piece of technology on top of something that people don't value because the technology will fail. 
you know, and you know, like, oh, well, I got to try something else from a technology. It, it's yeah. not the technology. Yeah. You know, as a technologist, it's really interesting. It's not the it's technology. Brilliant. Yeah. You know, advice. but this, but the second thing is, is like you have to put in place more than just a tool. You know, you have to put in place a way to coach, to educate, to bring knowledge about how to build the best leaders. Yeah. You know, in the world that's dynamic teams, that's agile, that most organizations, well, your HR system has a who reports to who structure. You know, that's not how you work. We did a webinar yesterday where 80% of the people on the webinar said they work more with their team leaders than they do with their direct manager. And that's, yeah. you know, that's not a surprise when you're on multiple teams. I mean, you have a team of girls behind yeah. the scenes that are editing <laughs> your you know, webcast for you. you yeah. know, they don't work for you. You're not their manager, nope. you know, but you work with them. And it would be yeah. really interesting as you as a team leader to say, hey, how are the girls feeling? You know, that are do- and the boy, I guess, that are doing, yeah. the, that are doing the work. Well, yeah. so, I've learned we're just going to call them the team, not yeah, the girls. the team, yes. <laughs> the exactly. girls back at the home office, yeah. yeah. You should build a team in our software called the team, and we'll see how they're feeling when you call them the girls. But uh, anyway, you know, that, it's, it's really thinking about it's more than just the tool. It's more than the tool, and it has to be how do I, you know, the focus really shouldn't be even performance and engagement. It should be how do I build the best teams, period. Yeah. And yeah. then the, the measures I use are engagement and performance. What I'm not trying to do is put in place engagement processes and put in place performance processes just to do it. What I'm trying to do is build the best teams that do their best at work. Yeah. So quickly, tell, tell, tell the audience, because I love what you're having to say, and I love what you're doing over there at Marcus Buckingham Company. How can they get in touch with you? Yeah, so I'm on Twitter, you know, at Jason Averbrook. I'm there a lot, uh, probably too much uh, at times. <laughs> um, and uh, otherwise, just uh, you know, like text me. <laughs> yeah, cool. So hey, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so FOT Nation, if you want to get a hold of Jason and, and learn more about what Marcus Buckingham Company is doing, please connect with him. He's he'll definitely respond, and they just have some really cool kind of methodology and performance management that's really different than I've seen across um, really anything right now. Um, and they also had the technology to go with it, which I think is awesome as well. So Jason, thank you very much for being here. Yeah, thanks today. for having me. All right, hey, and thanks for the great folks over at Higher View as well. Um, really appreciate having them. Hey, until next uh, month, we'll see you back here on uh, the Weird Science video cast. Thanks, everybody. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intentions?